Simon Kennedy Rose, Michael Clapsaddle, Sue Will, Alex Owen, Lorenzo Morales, Marcy Kosser, Dan Minardi, Karina Litzenberger, Nancy Takala, Howard Littman, Bruce Meese, and Daniel Judd. Please come in the hallway now. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. We'll start right here in a second, though. If you want to grab something, grab it in a hurry. 11 points. Direction, the anime preference. With the clock, I guess. I was told um, to wait about four minutes. Is that okay? Okay. I'm sorry about that. Jerry, I'll give you that hand up. Okay. John, what event is this? Masters. Yeah. Okay, we're fixing to start the uh, Masters final here in a few moments. Uh, this is Bill Riles. I'm waiting for my commentator cohort, uh, Justin Knoll, to to get back here in the commentary area. He wanted to grab a quick bite or two to uh, chomp on while, he, while we're working. But uh, he'll join us shortly, and when he's back, I'll give the thumbs up to Jerry and John, and the match will begin. These guys are two extremely accomplished players. Greatest trophies, too. That's kind of what you mean first place. So uh, Justin has arrived. He's uh, <laughs> set up his computer for the uh, commentary. He must still be a working man. Yeah. For the uh, transcription, he's going to be doing a live transcription as we commentate. So we'll have some uh, not only uh, expert analysis from him uh, on his own behalf, but also uh, from the uh, XG analysis as well. So uh, it's going to be a busy day, lots of streaming. Uh, this match is on our commentary table one and table two, which is also being streamed. We'll, starting probably in another 15 or 20 minutes, will be Alexandra Newtfer, who is 10, 9 and 1 in the championship, the only person with one loss. She'll be playing Ray Bills, who's 8 and 2. And on table three, table three streamed will be. Uh, Kerry Horty and Victor Askenazi, who both also have two losses. So, uh, depending on not yet, depending on uh, how that uh, how the results go from those two matches, will uh, dictate uh, the future rounds in the championship. There will be at least one other round, one additional round. So there will be at least a round twelve. There could perhaps be a round thirteen depending on who wins and who loses in these next couple of matches. So, uh, Justin uh, Ray, if you don't know it is now, getting set up. Okay, a couple more yeah. minutes and uh, he'll have the computer geared up and XG ready to go. Yeah, right. It's good. It's, you know, Justin just arrived. He's just waiting for his laptop to wake up, and he's going to be um, live transcribing. Right. So that's the reason why no if you don't mind waiting, we will be good. That's fine. Have you heard uh, how Riles is the sole owner of Alex Nazi? Oh, he was sweating out last night. <laughs> what, what are your criteria? 
my sister might show up. She lives in a Chicago suburb. Uh, she texted me, asked me what my schedule was. I told her, and I haven't heard back from her, so I don't know, maybe. If she does, I might want to use my break then. Okay, we're fixing to start. Okay, we're we're good to go. Okay, so I gave John and Jerry the high sign, so uh, the match will be beginning. No, uh, both great players, uh, Justin. You, we don't have any bias here with you being a student of John's. We, we, we got the full mix. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if the I wish he taught me how to roll like him in our match earlier. That would have been useful. <laughs> not only does he outplay me. Oh, wow. Well, sorry. Yeah, that's good. Okay, get your gloves on and your game faces and all that. It, it's the same game, just a different setting for me. Uh, Thanks, Tara. Okay. Good match. Good. You know, it's kind of interesting you're talking about John out rolling and sometimes. Uh, Heard a great line the other day, and this match is going now. Y'all see the preliminary rolls, but Dmitry Obakov uh, was talking about the DC uh, doubles. Michi and Blake Fleetwood were playing together. He said that team's un unbeatable. Michi can play a 2.0, and Blake can roll a 2.0. That's what I said. I said with Michi's uh, with Michi's play and Blake's rolling, they are unbeatable. So here, a couple of pretty straightforward opening rolls, kind of establishing the pattern of this first game. This is the first real decision, deciding whether or not you want to just make the three point or make the ace point, all right? No, nah, I think you just always attack on the ace, especially with the blots out there, you know? The extra numbers to fan give you the opportunity to pick up all the extra guys. Well, he comes in with a four, but he can't clean up any of the blots because of the six. Of the sixes are frozen. So it just comes out. It's two. So he's got some real blitz potential from here. He's doing pretty good. Could hit two. Could hit two. Double tiger, as it were. I prefer maybe uh, not the double tiger, but maybe making the outside point and hitting, but I can definitely understand the double yeah, tiger. He gets play. them both in, but he misses both blots, so uh, it's a, a rare roll in that position. Hey, folks, if you're still alive in the main, please step out to the corridor right in front of the Chicago Open banner. Alexander Ray, Victor Carey, David Klausa, David Handel, Ray Fogerlin, Dimitri, Ed O'Loughlin, Dennis Rock, uh, David Rockwell, Dennis Copeland, and Curtis Melville. Please all step out to the hallway. Yeah, yeah. you could just make the 10 point and then make the three point. Yeah, I, I, that looks straightforward to me, but. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure he was considering uh, hitting on the seven and making the point and continuing the blitz, but. Okay, so uh, maybe Jerry had a little bit of some early 
positional advantage, but this double sixes kind of shifts uh, yeah, shifts it back in John's favor. They've got an even race now, right? Right. So. Three one is good. Definitely want to be making the anchor. Just uh, to the bar and then split ten nine, maybe. I just maximize your builders for those other points. Uh, he takes it on in. The computer likes the funny play of playing ten to. Uh, to 10 to 4 and 6 to 5. Uh, well, you know, he, he wasn't going to get a shot on the next roll, so he could just do maximum board construction. After the final ace, I'd probably just play 8 to 7. We've got one left. The last one probably doesn't matter that much, though. Six. Okay. Right. Offsets John's sixes. So. Par for the course. Uh, <laughs> racing lead uh, reestablished. Jerry's up by 22 pips right now. So, I mean, the roll is fantastic. He's just counting to make sure he's ahead. But you can see with the, yeah, after the roll. So, with the, I mean, if you look at the inner boards, the guys on the ace and the guys on the three point. Everyone says they can see that you're ahead by a lot, but this one you can actually see that you're ahead by a lot. Exactly. Without really needing to even count it. So he really needs to perform on the next roll, or the cube will or be the coming. Cube's coming. Let's see if uh, the strong arm is in action. What's that, 13? So. John played two down. Right now the, the race is at 13. Probably. I think the point of last take in this position is a 12. Is 12. I mean, there is some buried checkers on the ace point, which might give him a bear take, if anything. But I, in my opinion, it's uh, probably a very close pass. And I would pass this for money. So at an even score, I'm passing this as well. Though it's probably really close to a take pass decision. But in situations where you're forced to roll well, and, and just it just becomes work. a dice game. You just I don't uh, want to turn it totally over to the Yeah, dice. of course. John O'Hagan is doing the um, you won't make mistake. the count. What is it? Uh, the trice count on this one, which is just super super easy to do in your head. He's going to use eyesight. You know, no, for, he doesn't uh, actually. Everyone's information. Uh, we got some requests yesterday to periodically uh, introduce the announcers as people are tuning in and out uh, during the course of the uh, matches. Yeah. I'm Bill Riles and. Uh, so Providing double ones here doesn't hit the uh, the five point. Double ones after the two one just makes the board. It's only correct to hit after the four one slot. Our XP, XG uh, transcriber and expert commentator here is Justin Knoll from uh, New York City. So the hit is clear. Lifting the blot isn't right. Playing the other one down is better from 13 to 10. The computer did. He chose against it. Here we go. Five We're four is a strong roll. Again here. Two six. Lots of target, lots of ammo, so yeah. Strong double in the position, I mean, looks pretty passable. You might be able to talk yourself into taking if you only count the number of checkers in the zone, but the position is pretty terrible, so it ends up being a correct pass. Taking it would be a 10% error. Currently, John is playing at, uh, I think, like a zero. Yeah, he's had essentially no decisions yet, <laughs> except to Just pass. take pass decisions. <laughs> Which uh, pretty easy like to figure may, out. Uh, we may get there again. Might have another fast take pass decision. <laughs> he keeps on rolling boxes. It's probably better just to come over to the four. Five four just comes off the anchor. Yeah. Two 
two four. Yeah. What's his response? One six. Okay. Well, John John gets a break here. He's been struggling against the dice uh, first three games here. Let's see him. Two six. Yeah, just playing down is better. You don't want to jump into the outfield and allow him to attack you with all the outside guys. There's the eight point. Five, just make the eight point. It's actually a slight mistake coming out and down is better. There's the run. And John really needs to hit this. Or there's... He's correctly considering a cube here. He's got 11 numbers that he will definitely consider to be uh, like market losers. I mean, you know, obviously he has the entering sequences, but he's outboarded. He is ahead in the race by two pips. So even if he misses the shot because of his racing lead, that's what he's doing right now is just counting. Just to see if he's ahead, he's got, even if he yeah, misses. I was say he's got and it is a correct cue. 15 queue. numbers. Double ones. Yeah, it was a small cue. Yep. One four. Play up and just over his head. I'd probably play it to the three point just for the flexibility. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not post money anywhere. I stopped that last year. If you need to know what prize money payout, please come just see me. I will double share slot. The but I slot the two and slot the five is what I would do. I'm not expecting a shot to be given to me. So I might as well slot my next two best points and just prepare for contact in the future. There's no sequence of numbers right now that's going to leave a shot for him, so he might as well just slot the two best points and try to cover them. John will do that. And he does. I mean, if he wants to just play for real flexibility, he can play to the two point. I would probably just cover. down. When you know he's not going to come off of the midpoint, it is usually better just to play two down for the flexibility. Yeah, you should definitely slot the four. Make it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Okay. John is ready John for contact. John is ready, if he, but he doesn't have a shot anywhere in the immediate future coming. I might have just played to the ace point, keeping the extra spares on the, the six. It can be important to continue to play over the head if you don't roll anything good for a while. Again, nothing this roll, so it's... Yeah. But the spares on the six really improve your flexibility in a lot of these positions. We're still in the game. Racing equity standpoint, what's, what's the count? Uh, Gary's up by 14 pips, actually. Is he? Okay. And with John's crunched board, I would consider a... Uh, I would consider the cube, definitely. I mean, just on racing alone, but maybe not. Oh, no, sorry. I have it backwards. He's actually down by 14 pips. Okay. Yeah. One, four. And these positions usually wait till he jumps off the anchor and then cube him. This is what... uh. The game plan usually is. 
Jerry, Jerry can't clear that point, yeah. so John gets I don't another. think you want to. I think you want to stay back and wait for the guy to leave and then well, pounce on him. with the count down. So I think four to one and then three to two. Or you could shift two to one to have the cover from the eighth. Okay. Four to one and three to two is correct. Is it? Yes, it is. So John hops off of the anchor now. And he should hop off the anchor and play four to three is what he's thinking about now. So as to not give him a good ace where he doesn't have one already, you know? If he plays to the 13, he's giving him a good ace. We're here, the twos and three, the twos are duplicated. So John's looking at that. And I'm sure he's going to find it and he's going to end up playing the other way. Maybe it's not. In the ace, but he's still thinking about it. All right. Yeah, I mean, the differences are really small. Actually, the differences between 20 to 13, what is this? No, it's actually not small. It's actually a 7% error to uh, go to the 13 and give him a good ace. Yeah, but he just really doesn't want to be hit. So if you give him the ones, the twos, and the threes, it increases the likelihood of getting hit. And the blot on the two isn't as painful because of John's uh, crunched board. It would be a 10% error to actually go all the way to the 13 point. Well, it's interesting, you know, particularly with a player like John Payne, you can really gauge the significance of the, That's the situation and the play, uh, how much time he spends on the road. Yeah. Oftentimes, uh, he, he sees it 100%. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. I knew he'd find it. Um, and of course, it's a correct cube. Like I said, in these positions, you usually wait until the guy comes off the anchor. If you do it before he does it, you could just roll double fours, double fives, double sixes, and you never get a shot anyway. So you wait till he makes this play, then you cube him. It's an easy take. Um, he's still up what? He's still up 13 pips. Yeah. But his board is crunched, so a lot of that racing lead is wastage, and it isn't really counted accurately. 3-5, so hit and cover. Big roll. Drum roll? Mm. Uh, nope. Direct miss, so... Uh, two, four. Takes the second. He hits the second guy. I mean, there's two ways to do it. You can hit and lift, or you can just stay in the outfield and try to pick him up a second time, but this is correct. Yeah, well, not much you can do about that one. Not much you can do about that one. John's looking at a distinct uh, possibility, possibility of getting gammoned. 2 4. Double Ooh, fours. Look out. Uh, they jumped up quite a bit. I mean, obviously, he's like at 60% gammons right now. Uh -oh. Oh. <laughs> Forget that. I mean,. Obviously, you want your jokers to help you win a game, but having your jokers get you off a gammon, too, is pretty nice. Two points either way. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah what yes, you got? You take two sets. So it's going to the 18 right instead of taking the both to the 13. Yeah, it was the same. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, why are you playing your board? It is my board. So John O'Hagan is still playing at a 0 0.75, and <laughs> Gary is playing at a 3.23 three okay. after the first three games. <laughs> 0 0.75 is good, I hear. And probably unsustainable. <laughs> yes, of course. Slide, yeah. Level five just makes the three points. Double sixes. Yeah, I mean, these two are forced, and I just come out. I'm out. I'm, he misses you. Yeah, I mean, if he misses you, you're doing good. I mean, uh, After the roll, you're ahead in the race by seven pips, so just expect my opponents to miss. They never do, <laughs> but uh, I'm an optimist. <laughs> the other play is 13-7-2 uh, and 8-2, to two, making the two point, and that's only off by about 2%. But well, coming all the way out is better just because you're ahead in the race now. I mean... If he rolls the four, I guess maybe you wish you were still on your anchor, but if he doesn't, you're glad that you've yeah, but he escaped. Yeah, has a two-point board, so not that big of a deal. Making the ace point is, uh, is a pretty big error, though, if that's what he's considering. Okay, so the two-point is a lot better. Second best play. Double two. It's a good double here. Double ones does not cube him. I figure it's a good cube, especially just being down in the uh, the match score. Oh, one one. Second ace is in a row. Roll too many of those, you're going to be happy you didn't double. Jerry'd sure like a little bit double ace action himself. Three, four, just replenish the 13 point. Two, five, finally he gets to run. So John's up 24 pips in the race, so I mean. Two, four. Normally you wait to cube until you have market loss, and you don't really have real market loss with five checkers on the mid, because the big doubles still leave you with guys on the mid, right? Um, one thing you might consider doing it though, just because of the score, but it is technically a no double because you really don't have any market loss. Yeah, I mean if he had four guys there, it would be a cube for sure. Because then you can lose your market with those doubles. I would probably just slot both, but this is fine. One six. Two one. Because of, because of the four left, yeah. Because obviously your bigger doubles now clear the point, which is what you want, right? Mm -hmm. And if you rolled them when there was five there, he can still take. Lorenzo Morales. So now he's going to reevaluate the race. So now that he's 21 pips ahead, it 
It's a cube now. It's store. still a take, though. A, yeah, it's a... It's a cube for money. It's a cube at the score. It's a cube on the moon. It's just a cube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, of course. Yikes. That's not like my man. Just a little. Slap the three. It's still a cube. Double twos. This is like the market loss we talked about, but I mean it's not as big of a market loss because he's still being held six away. And that ends up being hard to break. So he's considering whether or not he even wants to play down to the 11 because he knows he's going to be just creating more contact with the, the guys on the 20 point. So he might consider playing down to the 7 and then to the 4 because he can see that the guys on the opponent's 13 are coming forward soon. So it is correct, actually, to play down to the 7 and the 4. That's why it's giving. Yeah, by a lot, actually, because the contact value increases by a lot when you're six away, right? It's just it's really, really hard to, to, to clean it up. This is why I'm eliminated in the third point. He comes on. Hey, John. This is a pretty sizable error. That's like an 8% error right there. There went the zero seven five. Yeah, there goes that one. It's worse though. <laughs> yeah, it's worse. <laughs> Got it correct though. It's still a cube. Yes, it's still a cube. I mean, the racing lead dictates the cube, right? I mean, you're you're ahead by twenty six pips. And there are still those double rolls that allow you to clear those points. Yeah, Phil Simborg had a lesson on these on his YouTube page one time, where he said, uh, once you have the market loss with the four checkers, and you're ahead in the race by about 15%, you can, um, you can double. Shout out to Phil Simborg. Shout out to Phil Simborg. And I'd well. probably just play four to one for the flexibility. Yeah. You don't need your board there. You just need the flexibility to break that eight point. Six five. Six, five. That's where you're glad you. Uh, That's where you're glad you played it right, or else you'd be leaving a shot. It's nice when you make the right play, and then you see that you would have been punished had you made the other one. You, yeah, you don't want to crunch your board, so you got to come off with the double fives. But the dangerous thing is when you make the wrong play and you're rewarded and you think you made the right play and you keep doing it. Yeah, it's no problem with me. I'll still call you guys. Still call them names. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, you don't really have many gamuts here, so you just kind of play for the win and clear the six. Your racing lead is such where it's hard to lose, but not impossible. One three. This one crossover. Pretty much over. So we're looking. What's his roll? Four, four, four two, three. Two four. Two six. Still a small chance, but he needs it now. Now the game is over. Should resign, single game. So John is still playing at a 2.08 now. Uh, an increase from the 0 0.75 from the previous games, but still pretty good. And uh, Jerry's playing at a 2.36. So just uh, really strong play overall by both players. Play both, both players, perhaps. Six, two, 
true. The scary thing is these guys play like this on a reasonably regular basis. Yeah. Double threes just makes the bar. Three two, we just anchor. Split. Double twos, cocked. Five one is definitely not an improvement. <laughs> Yeah, I just play 11 to 10. For those of you watching, you might uh, note that they're playing standard USBGF basic four, rules, which includes the uh, dial and checker and legal moves. So this is a mistake, actually. Making the four point is better than making the 20 by a lot, actually. I guess the 20 has decreased value and the guy doesn't really have much going on in the term in the way of offense where making the four point really improves your priming game by a lot and it's really an efficient use of those spare checkers sitting on top of the structure. That error was about eight and a half percent. Yeah, there's nowhere else for those checkers to go, right? As yeah. you were saying, so you just put them there. Back checkers you'll be able to use some other way. Plus you're behind in the mat. So. That was the correct play by John. Really nice. I probably would have too. And now he doubles. Take is easy. Is that a double? What did you roll? Four one? Four one. Really? I would think so. It's pretty optimistic. Um, you're not guaranteed to cover it. That's for sure. It was a little too early. It was a uh, like a five percent error to to cube that position. You're just. I don't even know. If when you're stuck back on your own anchor, it's even a market loss if you cover it. You know, here is this still a take? I mean, probably. Runs off the anchor. That's correct. A six. I've seen better rolls. Correct play is just to play eight to two and then four to three. Something like that. Yep. Like that. Minimizes the shot, still keeps contact value on the outside. It's good. Hey folks, in case you can hear, we're running a eight player bracket for the red logo Chicago open board in the back. It's eight players at 125. Looking for six more players. We already have two. Three six. The best play is just to cover the two and then play six to three, which I just couldn't do with the spare checker on the six point. I don't have it in me. I don't have it in me. Yeah, I would make this play. It's only a one percent error, but. Just, I mean, I can see him stopping the ones and the fours from getting around that way, which increases his chances of winning the game, but I couldn't do it. Even after seeing the correct play, I would have a hard time doing it. One finally gets that four point filled in. Two three is just, I don't know, two down. Five four. 
John ought to be able to bring this one home fairly simply. Yeah, I mean, should be all right. The dice normally decide those things, right? Exactly. I mean, I say relatively simply, that doesn't preclude the potential yeah. <laughs> disaster. Yeah, I things can definitely go wrong. Yeah, just go to the east. Hey guys, right. anyone interested in the eight player bracket for the red logo Chicago back end board? Eight players at 125. Starting, I need one player, and actually, the first four will start right now. Four, five. Yeah. So double threes. You can just make the two, make point. The two point. I mean. So the race before the roll was actually even. This puts John up. Uh, it was pretty even, so it puts him up by 10 pips. And it's um, an effective trap play, too. Yeah, I mean, that's what you're looking to do. You're looking to force the guy off of the point. Making the two point is correct by a lot. Uh, he's not forced to run off with fives this roll, but what you'd ideally like to do is. Um, the roll dictates the two, so. Let's have his board crack, then play the seven in, then have him run out with the six, and then attack him. Yes, of course, the five on the next roll breaks his board because he's not, he's not inclined to just run off with any five, right? These are the sorts of positions, unless you roll double fives, you're not leaving the anchor at all. Yeah, 5 1 is like the worst five. Yeah, he, he couldn't even be tempted there with that. No. He certainly didn't want to roll a 5 6 in that position, I promise you that. Yeah, so 3 5 in. It's actually uh, close just to make the ace trap him off and still maintain the contact. Yeah, this is the right play. 7 So, in these positions, you kind of look at how likely you are to get a shot in the future versus the risk of staying back. And because his board is crunched and he doesn't have any immediate shots in the future, it's better just to run off of both of them right now to Don't stop any potential disaster rolls. Don't chance the unlikely game. Yeah, and even getting a shot doesn't just win you the game either because your board's already broken. Right. Diversifying its numbers. One five. Two off. Stranger things have happened, but it's extremely unlikely. Yeah, he needs to start with boxes and then hit fives. All right. 
right, well, I guess if you never miss. As we might expect between two players of this calendar, a nice, balanced, uh, competitive match. So far. Yeah, I mean, so far so good. Both players are playing under a two, which is uh, <laughs> solid. <laughs> solid. <laughs> solid, you know. It's, uh, I mean, the gameplay hasn't been overly complicated yet. They've had a lot of holding games, which players of this caliber are expected to play at this sort of level, right? Um, 6-5 here. Yeah, you, you just run. You have little choice. A double hit looks tempting, but you got one guy all the way out, so you might as well get the other guy out too. So the best play is to leave the 18 point slotted and just to play 13 to 8 and then 6 to 4 starting to starting to make starting to make your next point. Yeah, he sees that he should stay there. That's good. Oh. If we knew what the next roll was though, I'm sure he would have changed his mind. Double sixes. That's rude. Got a cube now. It's actually a pass. Even without the builders, or even with around. even without the builders, you got to think he's ahead in the race by 23 pips. He is on the roof, and that alone is worth uh, a lot. You know, in these positions, you have a really hard time taking when both guys are escaped and the race is so bad. The kind of things that you're expecting to go well in those positions just aren't aren't really there. Well, the guy is still on the roof, and I want him to stay there, so I make the three-point for sure. Um, bringing the extra guys down doesn't increase the fanning numbers, right? said this yesterday, right now he's got nine fanning numbers. You make the other point, he's got 16, which is a big game. I can see why he wants to do the other thing, but you also give yourself more landing spots for awkward rolls in your home board when you make the other point too, which, which is good. I also win more gems when the guy doesn't come in. I also stop him from rolling like a 3-2 as well when I make this play, which would upset me dearly. Uh, how dare they roll the 2 4? Too good? No. He did. It is now a monster pass. It went from a pass before to a monster pass now. Regular pass to monster pass. The monster pass. The monster pass. Yeah, it's like a 400 error to take this. There's no way he's doing that. All you have to do is just count it. It's ahead by 33. You only take this if you're Larry Bird. It's Larry Bird's jersey number. If you're a Boston fan, you go, ooh, you know, that could be good maybe, luck. Maybe, yeah. If you got a four-leaf clover in your back pocket, you could take this one. Yeah, I mean, it's not like he is anchored already, right? It's like he's hoping to be anchored. And uh, and when it, when it comes to losing one point or losing four, I definitely have a preference towards losing less points. Would the anchor change whether or not he can take? Of course, because of the gammons, right? In this position, you lose 32% gammons, which is tremendous, right? And if you have an anchor, obviously the amount of gammons you lose goes down tremendously. 
Well, I mean, the guy still has, yes. I mean, the guy still has five checkers on the midpoint. There is still contact value. You've got your five point made. And right now, but, no defense, and he's just going to hammer you. Yeah, I mean, if he rolls one of those numbers, for sure. But, I mean, just the racing lead alone is tremendous, right? That's what you're saying. If he had the anchor, he'd still be up by 33 pips, right? Or 30, yeah. Which would give some people some pause, definitely. No. Oh, Yowzer, Bowser. That is, no, he must have seen the 2 1 coming. He must have known. Did he know that he had a three following? 2 1. Wow. He can't believe it. Oh, now he gets the anchor. Okay, he's got to take now. Maybe, right? Like, yikes. Oy. It's not too hard for me. I just play two to one. He's got an ace for sure. You just play two to one. You do anything else, uh, <laughs> you might be getting that stick back pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, the PR went from a, a one point something to a 4.2 after just that one cube decision. But I mean, with the racing lead, you really don't need to maintain your board like that. You just you play the ace, you know? You're not the one who needs to hit a shot to win the game. The other guy does, so. No, you have to do this. I think he's thinking about whether or not he wants to come off of there, but you can't do that. Um, yeah, I mean, you're down 39 pips before the roll, and you're kind of alleviating a lot of the, the contact. Three two. He wants he wants better rolls than this. I promise you. So I'm gonna keep the spare there. I'm gonna play this and then to the ace is my play just for the flexibility. Those spares in front of the anchor are really important to keep your position safe long term. So when you start burying checkers behind, your position starts to deteriorate uh, rapidly. Six one. He wants to keep. The Going. Two one. Still not your friend this roll. Yeah. Well, thirteen eleven three two is the play. It's not really close. You still want to keep the spare in front of the anchor. Playing behind is pretty bad. He's got two blocks at his home board right now. It's the time to take advantage of the the temporary weakness, right? It also helps get you to a position where you can clear um, your midpoint. Yeah, you see, by doing the other play, his position is uh, shitty. Sorry. Sorry. And this is wrong, breaking the five. To volunteer, actually. These fives are not your friend. Yeah, well, he's got no choice this time. I think it's, I don't think this is the right way to do it. I think you want to advance your, the point you have to break, you know, by making the eight point instead of still keeping the nine. Yeah, it's within a pip now after the boxes. So it is right to just leave with both and just straight race. Because if you think about it, the gaps on the five and the four, you've got the 
wastage. Yeah, if you've got the four guys on the two, which are wastage. And you just have your freedom, your position is really strong. The only thing that might trick him into not leaving with both is, yeah, all right. Nothing's going to not have him find this one. Oh, double ones. The racing lead is gone. <coughs> double fours. All this after the four and on. Yeah, it takes a bad cue. Right? Easy take. Easy take. <laughs> Easy take. <laughs> no problem. No, no redouble. He's only up by two pips. It is a redouble. Wow. That's sick. What's his take point at this score? He's got a redouble. Only up by two pips. I mean, I guess he does the two long crossovers, the distribution. It's pretty bad. Strong. Ah. Uh, if only they had the computer in. Ah. That's a little too much. <laughs> The market is closed. It will reopen tomorrow. So there you go. Quadruple yeah, that play was not kind to John's PR. But it was kind to his score. It was kind to his score. And winning is what matters. Winning is what matters. Although he would have gotten a take out of him, and he would be up by eight to four now. What you have to condition yourself to. What's the lead hour at after that? Lunch is now being served. Yeah, uh, Gary's playing at a two and a half, and then uh, John's playing at four and a half. Gary's just has to be conditioned. You can't let that sort of thing. Um, if you're in the middle of a match and you want to take a break, he's going to shut the game and play with a clock. Break down the clock time. And whenever you have a little moment, please go help yourself as a player. Yeah, that take though was uh, ooh, it was a doozy. It's hard to justify that one when you see the race too, you know. So this was not the best play. You need to attack the guy on the uh, the two point. This was like a ten percent error. You need to just make the four and make the two point instead. Now John's got a 5-1 to play. Should just come out to the 18. Which is not an easy play to find, I don't think, but. Yeah, Ian just left. Uh, he just checked out of the room like an hour ago. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to see, but I mean, I can see the value in coming to the 18 because if he hits you with a six, he loses uh, a lot of outfield control. Right, so if he hits, then obviously the, um, the midpoint would be gone. Uh, both plays were really close in value, just running and the hit. Director Roy Tascar uh, checking out the, uh, the scene over the board. This isn't good either. 21-15 coming off the anchor and then covering was a lot better.
what was that? Oh, you hit. And you came in with the 3 1. Double ones. Awkward. So you really just want to make the seven point. I guess just play six to five with both of them. Okay, so their scores might be tied after uh, the match, but Alexandra, I don't, I'm not going to count her out. She's a tough one. Tough one. Saw her on the elevator this morning. Somebody asked her if she was ready to win this thing, and her answer was yes. The answer was yes. <laughs> like, just a good answer, I thought. Much better than no. Like a rock. Yeah, I mean, not being beaten by anyone builds your confidence for sure. <laughs> like, so this position is a pass. I mean, if you look at it again, we got Larry Bird's number. He's up by 33. Uh, it's up by 33 pips. He's still on the roof. No, no, no. It's much smaller because the gammon, the gammon, go a lot down because he's got an anchor. Yeah, of course. I mean, White still. I know, right? If you compare the positions, you would go. If the other one was a take, this must be a take too, for sure, right? Yeah, the other one was a doozy. This one, though, is borderline. If you take this one, it's only like a 4% error instead of a 40% error. Yeah, no, it's nothing compared. It's a 10x right there. I mean, you can see the sequences where things just go bad. You can't get that guy around in time. You come in, you can still hit the shots, but you do still lose about 22% gamins here. You still are expecting yourself to come in, which we know can can be quite difficult at times. I mean, best case scenario, you're in a four point holding game with four guys back and the other guys up 50 pips in the race. That's the best case. And then you're hoping to hit a shot. <laughs> it's not. See? For sure. If the other one, if you're doing the other one. <laughs> So I mean, you could just make the uh, the point, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't want them coming in from three to four, you know. The extra home board points really rack up the G's, rack up the wins, and then he rolls a one two. That's not a good number. 
nothing. I'm gonna try and take the two off, but I don't know if that's gonna work. Yikes. Back on the roof, that's not good. Yeah, I pick up the guy on the seven, I mean on the seven point and bring him to the five. I just, it gives me like a number to make the other point in the future. Less numbers to be hit. Two, five. Yeah, you could also come out. But this is all right. Five, four. You just come out and hit. Why don't you just come out and hit? Now you're doing this with three blots, though. That's no good. You can just come out and make the point and hit. Ah. Uh, 2 1, of course. Four five. One six. Yeah, I mean he's got his take. He's definitely gotten his money worth. Money's worth. Yeah, I mean, just coming forward decreases the number of uh, numbers that hit you. So I just continue with the ace. I don't see the point in playing six to five. Especially when they're going to roll a five. Yeah, I mean, you're not... You're not coming off your anchor when the guy's got all the guys in the outfield now that can just hit you and Yeah, I think you just come all the way around, you give him the six. You give him sorry, yeah, you give him you give him this number to hit you. What did he roll? Five one? Four two. Four two. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, still got the return shot. No, you should just make the bar. Make the bar because it bears on the two. This doesn't bear directly on the two. Should just make the bar. And plus, like if you get missed and he comes in on the four and you've got the higher point instead of the bar, that ends up being a pain to clear later too, right? It just ends up being a much safer position to clear from here than it is the other way. Oh, who has problems clearing? Not this guy. <laughs> uh, those are some tournament winning rolls right there. Four out, two down. Two one just clears the seven. Yeah, I mean they're. <laughs> He's down seventy five pips in the race. You are right. Uh, a running G is not. Um, it's not out of the question. I would have just cleared the the six point. Yeah, prepare to clear. Yeah, it was actually a five percent error not to play the the other to clear the other thing at the time before. Yeah. 
6-1. Here's why we do what we do. He gives himself 20 numbers to hit that guy next go around, which is why he split with the ace. Yeah. A two. Professional. I just continue on to the 13 for numbers that come in and hop out. Increases your coverage. You could also do the same by going to the 14, but I think you get more coverage on the 4 3. 1 5. Just really want to make the bar now. 6 4 would be fantastic. 2 1 makes the 4 as well. Oh, professionals. Listen, listen, that's just a bit much. Three, three sets of boxes. Wow. He can still lose a G if he's unlucky. And I would say that is unlucky. Whee! Three one. He still wins eighty percent gammons. Two one. He's trying to help John out. Six and the four crosses over. It's probably better to play six. What did he roll? Six four. Six four. Double fours. Can't gammon me, he says. Or just an ace next roll, too, right? Three, two. All right, drum roll. Drum roll. He's got a crossover and also not roll an ace. You can't gammon me. I'm John O'Hagan. You can't get me. Wow. He was like 80% to lose a G there. No problem. No, no, not at all. <laughs> not necessarily in the last one. Let's see what it what it says. Uh, four, five, take back. So right here at the six two. Oh no, obviously, but uh, yeah. So his double four is obviously saved a lot. Before the double fours, he was a eighty eight percent favorite to win a gammon. Pretty big. Yeah, Double four is strong. We were launching from back here. I thought John Fields was just a little bit of 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 a little Ladies and gentlemen, we have a result this morning. If you want to keep it down for just a second, we do have a result in the Taki Board Tournament. The finalist from Appleton, Wisconsin, Mr. Steve Reichelt. And winner of this year's Chicago Open Taki Board Tournament, hailing all the way from Japan in a red Japan t-shirt from last year's tournament, Yuji Ogura!
Yeah. I mean, they started with 22 minutes. Now, uh, it's a five halfway through the game, it's a five yeah. point match. John's down to 646, where Gary has 1252. So, John had a lot of thinking to do in those cubing decisions. Yeah, John had a lot of things to do. But again, John may get a long time. John is an extremely nice player. Yeah. Uh, so he, he's a calculating style player. Yeah. I'm going to turn my mic off. i got to eat this sandwich.
have seven spots left in the quickies. A mere seven before they close. $20 one-point match. First place is over a thousand, and we also have $500 of USBGF added money on top for USBGF members. <laughs> we have five spots left in the flip on the quickies. Five spots in the quickies. I need one ready to play. Yes, sir. Come on up.
Barb Roman, Ray Washington. Okay, I'm back. My battery had run out. <laughs> Plus, I might have hit a mute button at some point, so uh, inadvertently hit a mute button. So hopefully, uh, I'm back on the air and, and working here. Alexandra just had to leave a shot and got hit. Uh, so Ray has a six prime in front of her. So uh, Ray Ray Bills may be about to knock uh, Alexandra down to two losses. So. Uh, we shall see. Yeah, she's she's closed out. So it would appear that uh, Ray is going to beat her. Ray Washington. Ray Washington in the room. She she managed to get a double six. She got a double six. It's a very, very close double fives. Six two. She's uh she's got four checkers left. Ray has to roll twos or larger. Jack Edelson. Nope. She got three. Oh, my God. Double sixes on the last roll. She rolled two sets of sixes. <laughs> Alexander. Whoa. She rolled double sixes from the bar. Alexander and then double sixes to win. Wow. <laughs> yeah. She won. Alexandra won. She was had gotten hit. <laughs> she got hit when Ray Bills broke the six points. She rolled sixes. Yeah, I saw the sixes. And come back around, and then uh, she rolled a set of sixes on the last roll. I saw those sixes, too. And then what happened after those sixes? No, but she rolled a set of sixes again on the last roll. Really? She had to have any double, and she rolled sixes. Wow. So, uh, and, of course, Bill uh, here <laughs> has a uh, rooting interest in Alexandra as I own her 100% in the Calcutta. How so much will that net you? Uh... Well, let's say it's... Uh, if she were to win the next match, she would win the first overall in the Calcutta. Yep. So I, I, I don't know. Let's say 
mid to high six four figures. All right, all right, all right. They're starting. Uh, okay, they're starting back so up here. Okay, here we go. From Opening two one you turn slot. Yourself on? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so uh, here we are. Five four, point two match. Down. Uh, Hit and down. Two five. Just enter and make the eleven points. I can't see that. Uh, I can't either. Three five. Three five. Making the three point was so stronger. Two. Five one is the double hit of double course. Double hit. Yep. Two, two three. Threes, two in. So John's probably going to have a pretty good structure in front of those three uh, checkers. Three, two, just uh, make the five point, and I would split, split off the, the 24, back. from 24 to 22. It's actually 20 to 18 is better. Okay. It's interesting. It's probably like 2%, but still, yeah. it's interesting. I definitely wouldn't have found that. Okay, double Tiger. Double Tiger. And Double Tiger is massively correct. And you have the fun of being able to say Double Tiger. And Michi's here to appreciate it. Two, three. That two looks cocked. Is that cocked? No? Doesn't look, it doesn't, maybe it not. It looks flat to me. Looks like it's weird at an angle. Three, two. This is better than the other way. Aces. Want to step up and take the bar? Again? Oh, I don't know, man. I, I like the making five, the I like making the five. twenty point, and then you can split off the eleven from eleven to ten. No, you do care about the anchor for sure. Yeah, and then eleven to ten because you have a lot of. Uh, numbers to then make the bar okay so we may as well settle in this is going to be a long game I think. Yeah. double fives good time to make the 16 point as he did so uh you can be thinking about the cube now that's for sure Jerry's, uh, that double nickel hurt him as far as getting well advanced with his yeah, remaining I mean, his, checkers. His timing is, is pretty bad for this now. And the double fives was a mistake as well. It was better to just play the attack the three and attack on the ace. Yeah, because that might give you the time you to hit a six again, right? It was actually an 11% error to just make three point. It's just better to blitz even against their five point anchor because it gives you a roll to not still be back on yours. Here comes the cube. And the... the cube is a really good cube. Can he take it? Yeah, it's still a take. Still a take, okay. Probably not a uh, roast take, though. It's like an 11% error to pass. Okay. I think that the. the uh... The, the timing is just so poor. But, uh, Definitely is. Just come all the way out. You need to get out and roll a six or something. Start. I moving mean, rolling a six. Then he, what's he going to do? Is he going to hit it? No, he just makes this play here at the bar. That's yeah, better. and without that, I, I would have just run from the ace if you didn't have the chance to make the the bar and just try to buy some time by recirculating that checker. 3-1. Let's see if he finds this one. Make the 10. That's good. That's part of it. To yep. Them, uh, broken 6. And I mean, you're not cool worried point. about yourself getting hit. The more you get hit, the more his timing back there is kind of poor. Um, also, when we play the best number, obviously after this, there's only one more ace, right? We're not playing 6-5. to five. You're playing down. And so in order to hit that guy, you, you have, have to, to give up, up your midpoint, which yeah. is, I mean, the bar point, which is not what he really wants to do, right? Like, is this 2-5 like going to hit? 
I mean, it has to, but he it doesn't really to, want and, to. And John's just going to attack on it. He gets the opportunity. He has to, but he doesn't really want to. He likes that asset, but anything else just plays too poorly. Whoa. There we go. Well, there's the first one. There's the second one. Bring him on. You just uh, maybe you can make the three. You want to break that structure though? I uh, kinda, but maybe not. I don't know. Just to bring the other two back ones out. From the twenty forward, going huh? forward to the twenty to twenty to fifteen with all of them. Yeah. That's pretty strong. Go forward. Yeah, I don't mind that. What's our friendly computer like? Let's see what this guy has to say. Yeah, he likes, uh, I say he, it's gender neutral. <laughs> XG likes coming in and taking all of them out. Yeah, so just go forward with it, you're way ahead. You got great structure. Your wins increase by a lot just by coming out. You win an extra, what, seven and a half, eight percent games, and you only pick up by hitting an extra seven percent gammon, so it's definitely worth keeping the structure just to play for more wins. I mean, it's just, it looks awkward to break that up. Yeah, I think he thinks, and like I thought for a second, that maybe you win more gammons than you do. Okay, there's a, gets the second checker. Yeah, that's been the story. Boxes. Oh. <laughs> but if John comes in, yeah, he could have a hard time clearing those He's outside guys because of it. He's going to have a hard time clearing these checkers from back there. He had a good point. Probably just... Uh, I mean, that's a long, treacherous road home with those two back checkers. Yeah, this play is I'm good. Sure he doesn't have any defense, but he'll be just working Just coming on off while the guys on the roof is usually the right idea, but... The other play wasn't too far off, just playing into the 20. Hey folks, there's only a few sandwiches left if you have not eaten. 1-6, not the prettiest number. Not the prettiest number. Yeah, I mean, it looks bad, but the other plays are worse. Yeah, you don't want to put a third checker back. You know? There's the third checker. That could have been the fourth checker. Mm -hmm. Probably just lift the guy in the 10. Yeah. But it's just a. Uh, John's got a lot of work. Wow. Lifting on the dance. from the 10 is bad. Dance is worse. Lift. He danced. Yeah. Dance. Black on roll, 2 4. Three makes the fun one. Now he's going to get I guess so. Two six from the. Anyone's game. Four three, he's got to make the five. Can make the. Can make the eight. What do you think? Could make the 17. 17. Could make the 17. I like making the 17 just because uh, you're coming home. But, yeah, it's, it puts a lot of pressure on Jerry's checkers coming around. Yeah, it puts pressure on the checkers coming around, and it puts you more forward. You really don't want the separation to be more than it has to be. It just makes it harder to attack you as well, being this far forward here. 6-3. And look at it. This is one thing that we had talked about a little bit earlier. We've gotten into this fairly complicated game here. And uh, look at John's clock. He's, he's having to 
yeah. burn some time in this. For thing. sure, these are some difficult decisions, and you have a bunch of them, and you take your time to think about them because you want to make the best play, then all of a sudden you get down on the time. You know, if this goes a few more games and the time continues to tick like this, you just don't have the time to think Jerry, to make Jerry good decisions. Has an eight minute advantage and right you can now. make that, even that more mistakes. Yeah. For sure. I mean he's got plenty of time. It's better to come just all the way out. If you're gonna leave a shot, you might as well get the guy out and around. And John got a six five. You just gotta bring that checker on, man. Just go all the way to the 12. Yeah. Burying the uh, the spare is just bad, right? It just decreases yeah. your flexibility. What are you expecting to roll next time? Yeah. He's gonna, Fives? He's going to need that in a, he's going to need that spare in a perhaps even more critical position. Yeah. Later here. Once I mean, uh, Jerry makes a bit more of a board. Then, just playing uh, to the ace is never really the idea. I mean, I know you don't want to be leaving shots either. But, but you'd getting much rid rather of that spare is pay worse. it now than, than pay it a bit later. 2-4. There it is, dealer's choice. Well, he come on down to the uh, 11 with that check. Well, he could. He could just play to the 11. He's all stripped. You don't want to make it because the then you have to break it. Yeah. And then it's even more contact for the guy on the uh Yeah, you don't want to make on the that, eight point. You don't want to make that 13 point. Uh, Maybe you do. I guess you do. Seems like it's much harder to clear. Okay. Yeah, the other play was wrong by about two percent. Okay, here we go. Hitting time. Hitting time, and that's it. Safe. Don't want to give him wow. too, many, too many blots to pick up. So, what did John it, roll? Five, five six. six. But that's uh, he has to Oops. leave a lot of blots to hit it. And he rolled yes. a five six. And what was the next roll? Three one. Three yes. one. Three six. He can go up there and. When Gary hit with the 4-1, uh, it looks like the computer didn't like it. Oh, really? Yeah. Dance I mean, with the a, action's moving kind of quick, so I can't really see what they preferred. He danced with a 5-5 five, five there. Now yep. John rolls the 4-4. Four, four. That and then, uh, and make, then you the, make, the, make bar the bar for sure. No it just makes it easier to bring the 9 home. Yeah. No question. It's wrong, but it's easier to bring the nine home. He's staring a G in the face. Of Definitely Wait, what did he dance with? Oh, uh, well, I don't even recall. Doesn't matter, right? Five, five? Doesn't matter. Yeah, they say it was better to just break the nine right away with one and try to bring it in and leave the shot from oh, the roof. still in the air. Yep. Okay, there he's in. So now he's uh, what did he play with? This two Leave the one? spare back so that maybe that's the. Uh, I, get the I shot lost, and you can pick it up with the spare rather some, than uh, break the anchor. I lost part of this game. Lost some of it? Yeah, they're moving kind of fast. Yeah. Well, at least he finally came in. He's, he's probably a reasonably good shot. To, to beat the G. So. Yeah, he's going to have to roll pretty well in order to win a G in this one. So he's got 9, 11, 12 crossovers against John's 15. That helps. It definitely here. helps. Burn the one pip. You don't want him to point on you back there by leaving. 4 2, just take the checker off. Uh, 
was coming out. What's the roll? 3-1? You just take three two off. Take two off. Yeah. Two point. You just gotta go. You get the chance to save it for sure. Don't take the chance. Yeah, I mean, you just got down to nine checkers, so it's probably the best time to run. Yeah. You don't want him to roll the. Uh, you have to learn a lot of pips to stay, so. No men off, but he's still ahead by a mile. So it's just a routine single game. Two points. But as we've noted, John, too little, too late. The double nickels. So John got two points. Yeah, six two. John gets two points. Now the score is eight to six. Oops. And John sitting at uh, 2.49 on the clock. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, plenty of time. It's a significant differential. Now, John can certainly play with it. But he can play quick when he needs to. Uh, as long as he's aware of his time, he should yeah. be fine. Neil Kazaros in the building. How's it going? It's going good. Take a seat, baby. Welcome back today, sir. I need a break. I need a break. This Neil Kazaros, I'm going to take over. You can. My voice is, doesn't have... Bill's charming uh, Texas accent, but I'll do the best I can. <laughs> well, that's always a nice sequence. By the way, that 3-2 play, 3-2 after the 5-3, one making the five point, that minor split, that... Jerry made was very slightly better than the normal split. All right, I'm glad you didn't tell me it was refuted. I was like, uh... it, it's ve it's very close, very very close. The idea being, okay, checkers are technically in a slightly worse position, but the idea is not to allow the man who's made a spy point to attack on the fourth point. Any anchor you make, better anchor you make back there is helpful. Again, it's very close, and if you don't remember that, it's hardly going to hurt you. So why is it better to split there than the other way? I believe it's simply because of the attack on the four point. Course, it's just stronger than attacking on the three. three. You have to split. Yeah. Very close. As it in, in fact, when you... In the opening, you don't know how to play an opening 3-2 response. If you always make the normal play, you're not going to go far wrong. The normal play being uh, the major split 24 to 21, 13 to 11. That is rarely ever far wrong. 11 to 6 is just the play here, just picking of up course, the block. Nothing to think about. Yeah, I don't know. It's taking a minute. John's running low on time, though, but... See how that goes. He should be fine. Double six. Not the best. No. It's a lot of pips, but this position is going to get, is, is already looking disjointed. So now you just come out. And John's try, look at it, maybe trying to get a little more diversification, but. It's better to make the four point, says XG. Than coming out. Than coming out. I can believe that. 20 to 14 is close by about 1%, but yeah. the computer's liking just making the four, maybe with the... I would not do this. I don't understand this play. Yeah, this one is wrong. How, what a lovely number this is. This makes life easy. So, you just come out and you make do that and you, you do that and you <laughs> get ready to win the game if you can roll a double, another double quickly. No, nope. John's plan out there worked. He's got another point made, but that point's a mixed blessing. No. You 
bite the bullet now? I think so. Bullet biting time. McGarry is way ahead, and he has no timing. He's just coming too forward too quickly without having to pay now, so. Oh, what a nice roll. Now, now Gary's going to queue. And John's going to take. John's been taken today. Well, you have to take this. Yeah, he's been he's been taken today maybe though. Jerry, maybe Jerry thinks it's too. Uh... Big cube. You got you got to send this cube. You've got market losing sequences for eight, sure. Any, six four loses the market. Eight double loses. And the market. you're ahead by forty four pips. Loses the market. Do you pay off here? I don't. I don't pay off because. I don't it's, think you it's, need it's to. It's such overkill when missed. You know, you pay off. Seriously. Oh, wow. Pay off. He has a huge drop. I don't think that's right. It's not. It's wrong by uh, about eight and a half percent. That's huge wrong. So I don't know. Maybe I. These players have a lot more stamina than I do, but it looks like that somebody's getting. They're getting tired. How's the PR running? Um, let's take a look at this here. Double pass. Um, around 3.8, 3.9 respectively. Okay. Both these guys were playing better earlier in the tournament. It's right, right? I'm, yes. Double hit with the 4-1. It's the only right time to do it is when they split with the ace. That's correct. There's just nothing else to do with the number. We try to find different plays, but none are right. Something to be said about picking up two guys and just tossing them on the roof. Things could go well. Yes. And when you've got the ace well, point slotted, it's definitely best to just yes. make it. J Jerry here is itching to get a gamma-ish cube in, and that beautiful 4-2 will stop that plan. Now Jerry just has the worst game. It wasn't good to hit loose with the 4, though, in that position. I, I can believe that in spite of the score. He should just move and split his back checkers. Split the back checkers was the right play, yep. It's worthwhile for most of us. I mean, if we're going to make these plays like double hitting with 4 1 after the minor split, you've got to know how to follow it up. It's easy to over blitz. So now, I mean. This is uh, a bit of an overplay. And this is a bit of a nice roll. I'd say. You making the bar or you making the five? I'm making the bar. The bar's right. But my style was to, you know, give no counterplay. Yeah, it's like the opening roll when they nice split. Position. And then you I roll double do threes, that you that just make to, the bar. How wrong, how wrong is that? How it's, wrong is it's that? It's pretty bad. We'll see in one second. He gave up two valuable points. He, he gave up, instead of making one valuable point, he gave up a valuable point to make another more valuable point. But the shots is too much. There's been some missed cubes in the, the meantime as well. Right before he rolled double threes, he had a cube. Even with the 8-7 lead. Yep. I mean, there are people who just, I mean... There's a lot of wrong information out there about not like never doubling when you're three away. You can take a look at my cube, the match decisive cube in the high roller finals against John. All of these are missed doubles. Yes, yes, yes. White has to double. It's just Black's game is awful with that ace point made. And I think it's in, the time the pressure is uh, making yes. him kind of go a little faster. Let's see how much time Jerry has. I know it's John's clock as well. He's got a lot. He's not concerned about time at all. That's good. He hit. Put him on the roof. And I don't know why he hit. Just playing six to three with no hit is better. Why would you want him I to hit you no back? I have no idea why he hit. Is he trying to get himself gammoned? It seems like it. This looks like a double to me too. Yeah, I mean. Maybe he's trying, but John's time is tick, tick, tick away. But the point is, why? The, he the point is, you don't care what it's your a clock pass. says. It's when a the monster match is pass. Over. It's a monster pass. He's shooting at that guy. What is the gambling percentage here? What are the winning percentages for White? 75-25 uh, for wins, and he wins 20% Gs. Pass. But, I mean, if you don't hit, I mean, obviously you still have a Q, but, like, you lose a lot less gambling. Why would you allow him to just yeah. roll a three from the roof? 
I would not. I would not have hit it. It's actually a playoff. It. It's too good. It's too good, Neil. Wow. Again, when you're three away, you have an when you're three away, you have an elevated gammon value with the cube in the center. That one wasn't kind on anyone's PRs. That game was played at a ten by both of them. These guys. I know. O'Hagan is in time pressure. There we see us that score based double, but was that a double? It's hard. They're moving fast right now to see it. Um, it's certainly an easy take. Yes. This is a special score here. Where it was a double by point zero zero one. Okay. I'd have rolled. I think that three five is wrong playing two down. That was actually in the quiz. I think you got to come up, right? Um, two five. Then again, he then again he's seeking a gammon, and the way to get the the way to get the match winning gammon. Just coming all the way out is is better. Run all the way? Yeah. Wow. With the three five. Nope, that helps. Again, this score here with the cube turned, Jerry is at gammon go. Exactly the same principles apply here as if he were trailing one away, two away Crawford. So the best play here is just to come in from the 21 and then move all three checkers from the eight to the four point. Absolutely, build that board and have builders. Because of... Uh... That, this wins more gammons. And the gamut, winning a gammon here is as valuable as winning the game for Jerry. And John's dice seem to understand that as he just nailed him with a beautiful joker of his own. You gotta get in quick, Jerry, or you're gonna be shaking John's hand. What did he just roll? He danced with he danced with six four. And now three two? This three two is John's. I'm hitting. Coming in on the 24 and then slashing? I yeah. think so. That's right. The right score to do that stuff. The right score to do that stuff. Sometimes they get G'd here. They just don't come in. There we go. What a swing that is, huh? Now cover. Cover. Yep. Got to come in. Could get very ugly. There we go. Fogerlin's number. Just come out, yeah? I'm coming out. He may only want to play with one block, but that looks pretty ugly to go 10 to 4. They didn't want him to just hit you loose on the inner board either, the, right? right? And you want to get That's out. That's why I'm coming out. Jerry's, if he stays there, Jerry's going to hit with a 2s, 3s, and 11s. And then if you fan, yeah. good luck. You can still get the with one guy closed out. Easy game. I come out. Aye, 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 aye. What does the bot say? The bot says to come out. By how much? Uh, oh, the oh. punishment! Ouch! Of course, John would have been hit anyway. But this is the worst way to get hit. Bring him down. Come on now, let's see what happens. I think I'm splitting. You don't want to get stuck on that ace point. That's for sure. You still want to be in the game if John comes in and you don't close him out. The best play is to come all the way out to the 18. And not pay the 3-5, huh? Pay the double three. Well, you're paying the double three either way. How much better is coming out to the 18 than uh, playing 10 to 8? The second best play is 13 to 11. Wow, okay. okay. 10 to 8 is wrong by 3%. Fine, okay. We see bots not rushing. You know, trying to move back checkers when they're blitzing. Realize, they realize they only have 15 checkers to play the game with. 
<laughs> Did they not change the score, or is it two away, four away? It's two away, four away. Okay. <coughs> oh, what just happened? I tried to change the score and it got rid of the game. Oh no. <coughs> Whoops. In the, in the hotel? Oh, there's a lightning storm here. Well, nice play. Because I'm. Mean, <laughs> I guess I'm too old school because I would have played 10 to 8 for a builder. But that builder doesn't give me any more closeout numbers. That's a key thing, too. And again, I mean... If he had an extra spare on the on the prime, you would have done that, right? Because it would have been easier to... Yeah. Builder, from where I was, only double five closes the point. I think you come up with the four and then you just make the nine point. Now you've got three numbers to make a closeout. Sixes, fives, and threes. And you're not subject to being jokered. All right. That wasn't his best. I think he gets runs. I think he gets. I run from the back. I certainly don't want to be there anymore. Just you want to bring that guy around. And to do anything else. Want to bring that guy around. But you see, Jerry's got plenty of time, and he's using it. And if he's not, and he should use it. John can't buy a three. Wow. Now you should be able to bring down another builder. Hello. Oh, oh. Now this is hugely Yikes. gaminous. Massive gaminous here. Just uh, all three down in one of the seven, no? The, then double six blocks. Yeah, but so sometimes you can else? do sometimes you can do worse things to your position long term than risking a double six. Double six blocks stop this double way. Six either. Come on, Jerry. You, to, st to stop double six, you had to play both checkers to uh -oh. the second. <laughs> this is fine. Two, two, three, and off. Beautiful yeah. roll. I mean, that's it. Uh, Wait, is that? What are you doing? There's only one guy there? in the bar. No. Wait, what? Oh, no, 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 wait, no, no, wait, no, 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 wait, no. did he miss? There's only one checker on the bar. You do not do this. No. Because you have a safe play the other way. Is it? I thought I thought it went to the other spot. I didn't think it went to the five. Put that, put that back and take the five off. And you have He's a got a safe position. He doesn't see that it's on the five right now. Pull your hand away and look at it. He doesn't see that it's on the five. Yeah, he's, he's not seeing something. This is something I, he looks, I can work on. Cause I, if I, it wasn't for the people in the background, I would swear he I was frozen. He froze too. I, had the same reaction I had to look at the background, people. At the background. Now they moved. I've Everyone had, was holding their breath, that's why. I've had similar mental lapses too many times. and. Yikes, 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 have, have yikes. Got to have a sense of... Uh, Two, two. You know, self-preservation is a sense of danger. John's really hoping he, uh... All right, okay. He saw it. <laughs> he's thinking, he's thinking, he's thinking what, he's thinking, he's thinking what the hell's wrong with him. He didn't see it. He seems to be. I mean, I saw what he saw at first. I thought he had to come into the, to the four point. Clear the rear. Do not leave a gap here to take an extra check or what. This is a lovely position. John really needs to come in. Flown the coop here, boy. Uh oh, nervous. Rolling him off the board. Well, I roll him off the board when I'm not nervous. So what can I tell you? <laughs> 
Oh, oh there he comes. What do you think his tight. chances are now? Pretty bad. Yeah, I lost it. Make two crossovers. Oh, yeah. I don't know the other guy. Just two down from the 13? Of course. Well, I don't know the other guy. He's got diversified crossovers. Cross it over. Good. It's going to be close, but the that Double make it. That's helps. going to gain a roll for Tansy, assuming he doesn't miss. See, here's the problem. I mean, these long crossovers. Now he's missing the crossover. We're going to make one crossover. And then what, five to two? Why Why that three? I'm not sure why he played that. Now, he, now the two doesn't cross over. You would have sixes, fives, fours, threes, and twos. Or maybe you're missing the other one, but... This, uh... It is possible. Oh, not if you roll that one. Uh-oh. Here we go. You got to get two in, two in. Uh oh. Oh. So now you do that. Now you get double two and be done with it. Good enough. Double two. Now there's a little rule here. Roll six one five one. That can save you a lot of time in John's position. John has to. Have, John has six pips outside. So three. So so three times two means he should be able to get double twos that he did. Good match, boys. Wow. It's always fun when you're being streamed to turn that scorecard after winning the match so everybody can see it. I wonder what the commentary said. Because I think it's you're trying to not get gammon. Yep. And it, you